Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, I got this mid-90s Toro wheel horse riding mower that I've been asked to take a look at. Uh, a little bit of the backstory was the owner went and replaced the drive belt on it, and it drove for about 20 feet and died, and then couldn't figure out what was going on from there. He took it to a local small engine shop. They had it for about a week, and they could not figure it out either. So he asked me to go take a look at it, and uh, make no promises, but we'll give it a shot, see if we can figure out what happened, and uh, possibly repair it. If not, at least kind of figure out what what's going on with it. So without further ado, let's go get her up on the operating table and see if we can figure it out. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Right, so we just hop up in the seat, we'll hit the brake. We'll give her a crank and just give it a listen first. If it does anything. And we have nothing at all. PTO's off. We have no power right now. Let's go see. Find out it's in here for like a dead battery, right? Let's go throw a test light on that. See if we get any power. Fuse box is hanging, so the battery has power. So it should have done something. Let's go give her a quick visual walk around. See, I see that fuse box is hanging on the other side. I'm sure somebody's been poking and hoping on it too to see what goes on. Yeah, so let's pull the pack. See wires ripped out of it. And we can go testing those fuse boot. Let's go, I'm gonna get a light. Yeah, you get a little bit better idea what we got happening. The ignition switch looks very clean. Usually that's got a lot of corrosion on it back in there. I don't see an issue there. Has a bunch of relays. So it's probably using those for interlocks. All right, let's try jumping. We have power going directly going down from the battery hot side to the starter. Let's go take a jumper. We're gonna jump between the, uh, the signal, the key switch signal to crank the starter and see if that part of it works. I'm gonna put her up in the air now. A few people ask me what my lift is. It's called a handy lift. It's very calm. If you just Google handy, the name of them will come up. Been around for a long time. They make them where they can run with air or electric. All right, so that big lead should have 12 volts going down to the starter. Let's just double check that. Guess around somewhere, which we do. I'm going to check the post too, because sometimes you don't have it at the post. Pull that back. Again, that's the signal coming from the key to tell it to crank over. And we're going to come back with a jumper wire. Clip that on. If we touch that starter, that starter should crank. Which it does. The battery sounds like it's a little low. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to throw a battery charger on that. It does sound like the engine has compression, so it's not like I'm afraid that the engine is blowing up. I'll just do a jumper pack on it just so we don't have to listen to that battery charger buzz. Let's give it another listen. What are we doing? What are you doing? Give her a little... So it sounds pretty good. The compression sounds good. I don't see an issue there. I'm going to turn the key to the on position. I see the headlights are on right now. Go to crank, nothing. We get nothing on crank. Let's go pull the plug and we'll see if we have any spark with the key in the on position. All right. Let's go ground that to some tin right there. And we'll crank it again. All right, so no spark. And it doesn't want to crank with the key. Uh, the engine will have a ground kill wire on it. And that generally, get this out of the way for a second, will be 
uh, going to the two coils and it grounds the coils out and it kills spark from happening. So we should be able to unplug whatever wire, it might be, so this will probably be charging system and that kill wire. As of right now, I'm not sure what color it is. We don't really care about the charging system. Let's go and plug that and we're gonna go try it again and see if spark comes back. Let's go try that again. Get out of there. Oops. And as you can see, it's, she's sparking away. weird that it's sparking more across than the body to the sheet metal than it is to the plug but that is not our issue all right so something is telling us telling us telling it not to put out spark and not to crank so i don't know if it thinks that a safety is on that possibly my guess because he changed the belt is going to think that the uh brake pedal is not depressed and the seat would be i'll have to probably see if it's even plugged in it is still plugged in so my guess is it thinks it's not, someone's not sitting on the tractor and trying to start it and possibly that the uh, brake pedal is not locked down. I do have the brake pedal in the locked position. So we're gonna get a light, we'll go take a peek underneath it. Go try to find where that safety is. This is the brake pedal I'm talking, talking about. Forward and reverse is a hydrostatic tractor. Forward hits the pedal forward, back hits the pedal back and you lock that up. And the only other thing could be also with that if it thinks the mower deck is on. It doesn't even have a mower deck on it and it's an electric PTO. So I don't think that's going to be an issue, but we'll find out. Okay, we'll get a light. And we're underneath it. I want to make sure the wires for the PTO are not ripped out of it and that the lock is still on it. Sometimes somebody will change a belt and that switch, when you pull it up on the dash, puts power down to a clutch, it locks this clutch in it and allows the mower deck to spin or not spin. But sometimes people miss this part right here, the little lock pin that holds it, and the very first time they hit it or turn it on, this whole assembly spins and it rips the wires out. I do not see that being an issue right now. Let's go look at the plug on the other side where it plugs in real quick. So those come up through the front, and I believe they're gonna be these right here. Uh, wait a second. I see a wire. I'll get you there. Let's get this out of the way. And it's like a wire is pulling out right there. That is not even plugged in. And it looks like one of those is not sitting proud all the way. They're not at the same height. Maybe that's supposed to be the way it is, but let's go quickly try plugging that in and see if that does anything again. I wouldn't think that would be exposed like that though. I'm gonna go get a little screwdriver or something, we'll go push on that, make sure that's all the way in on the tab. I can't see that, I shouldn't say that. I can't see it not, yeah, that won't weigh in. That wasn't doing anything. It all depends on how it's connected to the relays. I would think that just pulling the button up and not would be what uh, tells it to work or not. Let's go give that back on there again. We'll give her a crank. Do we have the big, no, we don't have this plugged in yet. Let me go put you in a stand. I got everything plugged back in. Let's see if it'll just crank with the key. Still does not crank with the key. I had that plugged back on. Let's go put a jumper on it. And we'll at least see if spark came back. I'm kind of doubting it, but let's just go see. Yeah, still no spark. No, that wasn't our issue. All right, that's after a quick visual. I still didn't look where the uh, where the pedal safety is yet, but while we're up here and while this fuse box is kind of flapping around like this, let's go get the test light and we will, where it ended up, we'll probe the back of each one of these with, with it on the crank position. We'll see if we have power on one side and not the other. All right, see what we get without the key being on first. Let's see if we get anything, that one lights up. Good, that one's got going across, nothing. And nothing. That one. That one has power. So the only one that doesn't have anything is the red one. Let's try going to crank position. And we'll see if power's on either side of that. It is not. So it's probably for something else. Maybe the electric PTO. Nope. I heard the PTO click though. So not sure what that circuit is for. I unplugged the seat. So it doesn't think anybody's sitting there. Still no difference on the crank. 
Let's, um, I'm gonna try jumping the contacts on the seat. So inside the seat, there's a little set of contacts. And some are normally open, some are normally closed. I'm not sure which way this is. That's why I'm trying it both first unplugged, and then I'm just gonna take a jumper and go past those two contacts. And it will trick it into thinking that you're sitting on the seat and see if we get anything out of it. Still no crank. All right. Someone already has the belly pan removed. I'm not sure what happened with that. So let's go take a quick look. I see a pinch on the wires right there. Not sure what they are going to. See another pinch on those. I don't see them cutting all the way through though. I would think probably one set is going to the seat and the other possibly is that interlock. I see a block right down there with a tie wrap going through it. I wonder if they have it bypassed with a uh, tie wrap keeping it in the locked position. Maybe it fell off. I have no idea what you can and can't see. I am looking up at that plug right here. The tie wrap I think was just holding the wires out of the way. And you can see different contacts on the side of that. So that's one. And that's the other. What would they operate? So one of them I would think would be for the brake pedal, right? Let's go take the brake pedal and release it. And we'll see if any of these are dep depressed. And what the other one would be for? Would they both be for that? Just operating different things? You know, one is for getting off the tractor when it's running, maybe one's for making it crank. Let's go uh, let that brake pedal off and see if it comes back all the far enough to go click those. Let's see if that did anything for us. So yeah, they're much closer. But are they, be are they being made? That one is. I'm listening for a click. And that would be for the other way anyway, right? That would be for... Right now would be interrupting the system. And when the brake fills forward, those being open the other way around. We've got to probe those and see if the signal is going through that. It looks like one's normally... see different locations where they're, they're probing out from one's wire here and here. So one looks like one's normally open. They're probably the same switch and same plug, right? So that one going from there to there and that one going from there to the far one. One's going to be normally open, one's going to be normally closed. I'm not convinced that that is our issue yet. I'm just kind of brainstorming as of right now because especially when he said he had changed the belt which would be this belt what would get interrupted in in doing that you know you would figure that would be along the lines and plus we did find that plug loose for the pto that was just sitting in this location not plugged all the way in so i'm not sure quite what they did with this tractor and you can tell somebody's definitely been poking around in it and like i said the the bolts are out for the fuse box and people have been poking and prodding trying to find what its electrical issue is and i have a feeling somebody put a new ignition switch in because that for the age of this tractor that looks like spotlessly new so i suspect that somebody replaced that let's unbolt it we'll pull the ignition switch back away from it and I want to probe on the back of it. And I want to see if we go to crank position, if we have a signal coming out of the switch, at least going to the relays and through the rest, uh, the rest of the safeties. So let me go get a pair of pliers to get that off of there and start uh, doing a little investigation. Yeah, that definitely looks super clean, too clean. So I don't have a pin out of what wire does what, but we're going to go, where's our test light? We'll go throw the test light on it. And we'll see if we have power going out. Right, so first, uh, go throw a key in it. Right. Put it in front of the camera where you can see it, right? We go. I'm gonna bend your head down a little bit. All right. So, so blue has power coming in. Orange has power coming in. <laughs> White has power coming in. 
and red. Okay, so let's go. The only one that didn't have power, which, uh, which was the white. And let's go crank it. Okay, so the only one that doesn't have anything going out is white. Right? Well, we got a white and an off white. So that one's got nothing. Red's got power. And that one's got nothing. Let's go give that one a crank too. The other part of it too is... Right? So that's the power going out. That one. That's the signal going out. Is white. Does it have a tracer on it? See a tracer on that one about the other one so one's bright white and one's i don't even want to call that dirty white <laughs> so that is where our signal goes out and so we know the key switch is working at least to go send power down to the starter wire which is flipped over to a blue wire let's go take a look on that fuse panel and see what goes into where we'll try to chase that back so So that dirty white is going to this relay right here. And which one? Let's see if we can find where the blue goes exits. Is it the same relay? Or a different one? What color is that one exactly? So it would be kind of a dark blue, right? Kind of seems like it's this one next to it and that could be I mean they could jump from one to the other I'm gonna go pop a couple of those relays out real quick we'll go take a quick look at them if they're the same maybe we're gonna try swapping locations so we see if we get any change on them so these two are the same and these two are the same I swap locations let's see if that does anything for us is everything still hooked up brake is on I'm not sure about the seat safety I wish we should look into that and, and yeah still nothing I'm going to go look into the seat safety to kind of eliminate that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a test light or a meter router. I'm going to go probe to see if this is normally open or normally closed. Then I'll know what state to put this in. So it pretends that somebody's sitting in the seat. Let's go figure that out. I have the meter on ohms. And that's just looking for a path. If I cross either together, it'll go to zero. So that's what I'm looking for in a seat, whether it stays open or it goes to zero. With nobody sitting in it, it's open. Uh, I should probably confirm that by putting some weight on the seat and pushing that safety down. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do that though. Anyway, so open is the condition we want to look for. Not that. <laughs> I'm going to, off camera, I'm going to go d double check that. I'm going to, I'm going to hop up on the seat, uh, try to put some leads on it, hanging out of the sides and make sure that this closes and that this circuit is working. I think you can see the meter. If I push down on the seat, it goes to zero. So it's normally open, and when it is somebody sitting in it, it grounds out. So that does need to be grounded out, or jumped, I, sh I should say. So I'm gonna do a little recap just so that I kind of remember what I did and that you guys can kind of follow along. I hope I didn't lose anybody. All right, so we know the seat needs to have it jumped to make pretend that somebody's sitting in it, gets that out of the circuit. We know that we get spark back if we unplug the safety harness from it and we just let the engine run. So we know there's not a problem inside the engine with the coils or anything, those are okay. And we know that the ignition switch seems to be working and the relays, I believe, are working because I swapped them and there was no difference in swapping where the relays are. So possibly, I'm kind of going back to, we. I, I believe we have some safety telling it not to crank and not to have spark. It thinks something is on. It thinks either we're, we are not on the tractor, the brake is not on, and or it thinks the mower deck is on, is my guess. It's it kind of one of those scenarios I'm zeroing in on. Those switches, uh, we can go, it's just, it's just a little rough to try to get to the GoPro. That's why I'm not jumping on that right away. Let's go take a quick look at the PTO switch 
and see if it thinks that possibly this is on. And let's actually let's listen. So it turned on. You can hear the actual PTO turning on. And you can still hear like it's this relay that's clicking when I'm doing it. So it doesn't seem like it makes any difference. Let's go take a, a peek at the back of that. What is that telling? It's just oil pressure. It does not have a low oil telling it not to crank, does it? I think it's just saying that because the key's on, it's not spinning. Let's go take a quick look and make sure it doesn't have a low oil shutoff. Which generally it'll be like a, a plug on the side of the case with a wire sticking out of it. Kind of sensing for oil. I do not see one. It also looks like somebody ripped the wires out of this loom that are down here, which would probably be all these right here. They ripped out. It's tough dealing with somebody that somebody else has already been screwed. You know, if we had gotten this originally without somebody screwing around with it, you may have had a, a better shot at things. Let's go pop this off real quick. Let's so look at the end of the plug, make sure we don't have any corrosion. So that's only got three wires coming out of it. Yeah. So that's gonna be power in, power out. And the third one would be safety. Hmm. Let's go probe that and get, try to educate ourselves what is doing what for the PTO. So one of these should be power. Orange has power, center has nothing, and the outer one has power. So why would two of them have power? What would the purpose of that be? So gray and orange both have power. Why? Why would you need power to... One's, it's, one's just going to go power. You would think you were just going to jump from one leg to another and send a signal down. Hmm. The two brown ones are tied together, right? Yeah. I'm gonna go try taking that switch out of there. I'm gonna go probe the back of that switch and see what it does. I think somebody's had this out too. The boot. I'll show you what I mean by the boot. The steering wheel boot, steering column boot is all lifted up. And when I went to go take this out, one of the prongs is already broken off that hold it. Some of the little legs kind of popped in. You got to squeeze all these in to get the switch out. Let's go plug the wires in and we'll probe those three, see what does what. That's all plugged in. Keys on. And we already know we have power on both one of those and nothing in the center. Let's see what changes what. And nothing in the center. There and there. So still nothing goes down the center of it. Make sure that make sure that key is on. Yeah, the dash is lit. And the brake is on. So we should think right now. So does which one crosses? Yeah, so the, the center one runs the clutch in. I'm just putting 12 volts to it. So either side will fire that clutch. If something's telling it not to turn on, it could be that it just, just says it's not running. I'm trying to figure out this as I'm going along with you. So if you're getting confused, I'm not there yet neither. I'm just trying to, yeah. All right, well, I think I'm to the point where I wanna go and probe those micro switches. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get you down inside there to go look at everything. It's kind of tight to get in there, especially with a test light and everything. So if I find anything, I'll let you know or show you and I'll report back to you in a second with what my results are. Not sure how well you're gonna be able to see. You can see I got the, the little alligator clip, that right there, on the lead, which where the white wire came off of, and then I got the other probe on the other one. And it is normally open. I click it over. That one is changing state. Let's go see if the other one does the same thing. And the other one comes off of different terminals. So that one's going to be the opposite. So in its resting state, it's normally closed. And if I go to click it, it's normally open. So both of those switches are working. 
I do not see them being our problem. I'm going to take a quick look at the end of the wires, but uh, I think we've got to look other where, otherwise. Elsewhere? All right, we'll go elsewhere. All right, so I decided to probe around a little bit more to see if I found any more safeties anywhere on them. And lo and behold, let's see if I can see in there. Oh, if you can see that little shiny screw sticking out of the bottom down there with the tab coming off of it. It's about dead center of your screen right now. Let me see if I can keep this light here. That's the seat safety that you lock up. And that's just not making it. Right now it's off. Right now it's on. Let's see what we get. Anything. Oh, come on. I thought we had it. That's not being made. I'm going to go take a second and bend that a little bit so that when the brake pedal is on, like it is, that that is, is seeing that signal. So that's one that's right now. It's not, right now it's not being made. Yeah, try to get you in there again. The other problem I see, I was trying to go deal with that, is the uh, that wiring loom. This wiring loom is tucked in behind it. So this is stopping things from happening like it should. And that's the one, I think that's the one they stripped the wires out of. Let's go pull that out of the way. Yes, yeah, so that's literally run in front of that, that lever there. See if we can get that. There we go. Out of the equation. Yeah, but that wasn't what was causing that. I still got to go bend that. I'm going to go take care of that. So I'm looking around and I'm seeing all these little cuts. You want to call them cuts? Those are stab marks from a test light. Those are not cuts. That's probing into the wire. See if a signal is going through them. I see that also back in there you look on that black wire you can see it on the black wire you can see a stab inside on that one too see it for the light adjust <laughs> alright so again somebody worked on this for a week they went and probed and picked and stabbed all over the place and we're not able to find it uh i do see that being one issue that that was not being made so that was acting like the brake was not on and that would make it so it would not crank um i don't know if that was the original problem and someone's been through it and connecting and disconnecting things and swapping things around again like they said the boot was ripped up on it and the switches we're taking out of it. So it's a little hard to say, eh, you know, your second fiddle on this stuff. So uh, it could be anything from somebody put a different ignition switch in, it's not the correct one, anything like that. I do see one more. I see wires coming back to here and they go to what looks like a neutral. That's the little shift plate for the hydrostatic forward and reverse. So I do see one more switch whatever these wires are going to those right there so i'm going to try to take a peek up underneath there see what we have for a switch on that and see if that is doing what it's supposed to be doing so i was trying to figure out what that is and i figured it out that metal plate on top of it and then it has a big uh, electric electromagnet on it that is cruise control so wherever you move the lever if you hit cruise control it locks it up and holds the pedal where it needs to be so as you rock this pedal forward and back you're driving so you're cutting a lot of grass you lock it in the forward position you hit this, it'll lock that magnet on the back and just hold the lever where it is until you hit the brake pedal and then it'll, it'll shut it back off or turn the switch off. So that's not our issue. So kind of starting to run out of things to check and I turn the key on and one thing I do see, I'm not sure if it should or should not work, is the parking light. Would that come on? The parking pedal is on, right? Let's go flip. Let's see if the PTO switch does anything. Yeah, that doesn't light up either. Let's go real quick, check the bulbs, make sure it doesn't have a burned out bulb. It could possibly be part of the circuit and it's not being completed if a bulb fails. I'm just guessing. That's looking pretty burned out to me. I'm gonna put a light across it, but that's blacker than black. So I tell you this, if you can see up, I ended up swapping 
the bulb for the uh, PTO, because that was not lit either. Now the PTO works. Hmm. I don't have a good bulb for the brake light yet, but let's just see. Nope. All kinds of weird stuff going on, huh? So even after I replaced the bulb for the parking light, it still wasn't lighting up. And I went and I took a look probing around. We know it's got to be off that, that lower switch. And I wiggled the, see if I can get you in there. Right. Yeah, let's see if we get the light right. There's bare wires. Move them around. I am looking at right there. There is a brown and a gray wire. I am hoping that's showing up right to the right of that spring right there. See it right there? And they were bare. I moved them around and then the light came on. So that's part of the signal not getting there. Still no crank though. But what I'm going to do, I just want to uh, assess what's happening. I want to go and just crank it by jumping the starter. I want to see if we got spark back or not yet. Keys on. Let's, what are we doing? We want to see if that plug will spark when we jump over it. Yes, we have spark. So we did figure out half of a problem. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure what was causing it not to have spark. Something caused it to die. We found that. I don't know if it was this switch not being made on that contact, just barely, and or the one that was grounding out having the light not come on. So we've chased a couple of things and then the bulb was no good for the PTO. Let's make sure that is still working. Wherever that plug went. Give it a second. Oh, call me a liar. There it goes. Yeah, so that's working. Parking light is working now. We just, just still do not have a good crank coming out of it. And where is the starter? Where's the switch? Just gonna double check on that one more time. We're still hooked up. Let's see if we get anything. Yeah, we still do not have crank. It's the only thing we don't have. It'll run. It should run. I'm gonna try firing it up. Let's see. Make sure all that part of it's still good. Yeah, we'll see if the engine part of it function, functions at least. Uh, let's go for a full choke. She runs. She runs while I hold power to that wire. Hold on a second. Let's go try something. Yeah. So by back feeding that, we allow it to have spark. Runs for a couple seconds and dies. Let me see if we can knock that throttle down. No, what might be going on is that the if the carburetor has a fuel shutoff, it's probably the fuel shutoff not getting power. So it's only using whatever fuel's in there and it disappears. Let's go double check for spark real quick. See if that's still there. And what we need, we need to put power to there, right? Yeah, still got spark. So it's just no fuel. So we got part of it. We got part of it working that we have spark. I, again, I have a feeling that there was one problem. Now, after everybody screwing with it, it generated a several problems. So we're getting closer, I think. And it probably was the original problem. Now they just dug a hole a little bit deeper. And let's go pop that air cleaner off real quick. I'm gonna go check and see if there is that solenoid on the bottom of the carburetor like I was talking about. And then that would need to get power. I'm gonna go trace that back. See if we could find something that's common for that not getting energy and that not getting energy. So I got the air cleaner out of the way and we can kind of see into the carb. This is that fuel shut off. This needs to see 12 volts. As soon as 12 volts disappears, it 
plugs off the fuel source so it keeps basically for run on a tractor doesn't run on afterwards and so that cough and a fart and, and pop back and then right next to it is that low oil pressure switch wire i was talking about which is this right here it was just hidden we couldn't see it so it's either looking for oil pressure and it may just work a light sometimes like on a generator on a oil pressure light it will not allow it to run it is full of oil of course i already checked that i'm gonna go grab a test light real quick and we're just gonna go see if we have a signal. Just put on the on position. Grab my test light wherever that decided to zigzag itself to. Let's see if we have anything coming out of either one. We don't have power there. And I'm pretty sure we are not gonna have power to the solenoid. No. So that needs to have power going to it for the fuel to shut off and it has nothing. So the saga continues. We still have more of an issue. We are getting closer. At least we have spark, <laughs> but we have an issue that is telling it not to run still. So we have no crank, no power to the solenoid. What else do we got? I think that's it, right? That's only, it, it'll run. If I put 12 volts to that, it should run and stay running. We'll put a jumper on it and fire it up, make sure. When I put power to that, it should make a clicking noise. You hear it? And it pulls it up. So that should be in the on position. I don't, the carburetor is kind of floating right now. Let me go jump that uh, starter. Let me back you up. You go jump that starter, it should stay running. I, I don't know the last time it did run. Let me go try and knock down some throttle. Choke, I'm not sure where it is. Let's just see what we get. The engine seems fine. It should shut off in a second. Yeah, so that's what it is. It just shuts the fuel off, got a little bit of fuel to run. That's what it was doing on the last time. All right, so we're getting closer. We know that the engine will run. We are still chasing an electrical problem. And I do not have, I try to do this without a manual to begin with because the whole idea of making the video is to try to figure out how to troubleshoot stuff. So that's the point I'm going to. I know it's somewhat convoluted and we're jumping around, but it kind of shows how different systems work on different things. Uh, I may, I, I have a feeling that something possibly got swapped out that shouldn't have been swapped out and is causing an issue. Maybe it's got the wrong ignition switch on it. Maybe some each change relays. I don't know. Fortunately, I do have another tractor that is, is similar to this or possibly even the same one at my house. I do not have it here. I may go get that and bring it over here and we can kind of, you know, eyeball from one to another and see where we can see the differences between them. That's where I am right now. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I, may, I may chase that. I may not. I'm not sure. So I probed back why it did not have power on this lead. And where the two major plugs go together. All right. So where the two major plugs go together, it did not have power jumping across it. It did not have power. It's actually this purple wire. I had power on this side. And I didn't have power on this side. So I took the whole thing, kind of rocked around and pushed the terminals in. Let's go see if she'll crank. I know we got the other part of it. So it'll stay running. If it does crank, it'll stay running. Still no crank. But it's, is the wire on? Yeah. But we, uh, it should stay running if I jump it. Let's go verify that. A little bit of throttle, a little bit of choke. <laughs> or maybe not. Let's uh, put a test light on that. Make sure the power stays on. It would be uh, that one. Uh, we do not have power. No power again. So it was, back you up. It 
lost our run light. So that was purple on this fuse. Power. Power. Should be going down to there. Now it's got power. <laughs> oh, you pig. Try that again. Now all we need is crank. You need to get it to crank from the key. Well guys, I'm gonna take a break for tonight and uh, my battery and <laughs> my flashlight went dead. So I think that's gonna, what's gonna make me have it call it. I have it kind of figured out. I, I'm down to a couple wires on the relay. Power comes in from the ignition switch on that yellow wire, tells this relay to fire. And then that one is supposed to walk over to here after some safeties and tell this one the fire. The problem is one wire is dropping out, it has power all the time. This blue wire has power. And then when you go to the crank position, it loses power. And that's coming out of this relay. I don't know why it does that yet. Um, everything else is, this is now, the green is an output. The black is a ground. That's the signal coming in and the orange is power all the time. That's all the wires that are on the whole circuit. So why the gray kicks out, I do not know why. And the gray, uh, makes a passage out through the relays and comes back. All that works, it's all working. It's just why the power shuts off when I go to the crank position. I'm not sure of that, but uh, my brain's getting a little steamed. <laughs> so I'm gonna go try it tomorrow. One thing I'm, I'm kind of thinking of, I'm wondering if the pinout of this ignition switch is not correct, that somebody put a new one on here. It looks spotless. For a tractor that's 26 years old, that looks very clean. So my thought is uh, possibly somebody tried uh, solving a problem by changing the ignition switch and it is the wrong pin out and it's just sending the wrong signals out from the wrong locations. That is just a guess. I don't even see a number on it. You should use a little like W4C, like, uh, like three syllables. I don't see anything on this one whatsoever. Anyway, we'll pick it back up tomorrow. We'll get it. All right, it's the next day. My brain is fresh. Kind of went through some things, put some stuff back together, and I do believe I found it. Nothing happens. Push the brake pedal down to lock it. Kick my ass, will you? I'll show you. <laughs> you want to know what was wrong? I was kind of probing around, and one thing that showed up was the parking light. There's a parking light on the dash right there. And it was lighting up when the brake pedal was not on. And so I'm like fooling around. Like, well, that doesn't make any sense. It was inverted of what it should be. So I started looking at the plugs. There's a, there's a micro switch here, and there's two down below that we were looking at. The orientation, somebody had it wrong. The one of the ones from up top on this switch was supposed to go down below. One from down below was supposed to go up top. So they were canceling each other out. They weren't working correctly. That's why the light was also opposite of what it should be. That's what kind of cued me in. So that was the last of several problems. Again, it had no spark or anything when you first came in. So <laughs> two other people worked on it before me, at least two other people worked on it before me. And of course, now I have to go try to figure out what other people did. They probably just had one problem to begin with and then it ended up, like I said, getting into three or four. So I'm gonna go button her back up. We'll do one last function check, make sure everything works. And then uh, I think we can go send this one down the road.
had to give it a whirl. Hopefully everything works. I would like to tell you that everything went without a hitch, but as I was wiring everything back and closing everything back up, it started acting up again. You wanna know what it was this time? I'll show you. This is for the PTO, it turns the PTO on and off. And what it has, it doesn't use either one of these on the bottom, just these three on top. So that has power. This is uh, going out to fire the electric PTO going out. And this is the safety coming in. So this has power going from here to here when the button is in when the button is out it opens that circuit up so it can't crank and it can't start well it started screwing up it was not sending power out on that leg all the time so i, I got a used one i put a used one in and now it seems to be taking care of it do you want to cut it open and see what happened let's go hit it on a bandsaw real quick and pop the end off and see if we can see any burnt contacts or anything screwed up inside there Might have destroyed it a little bit because I caught it. Right, turn it a little bit more. Let's see what we got. So there's another block up higher. So this would have been the lead that needed power. So it's like this one would have clicked. Here's the bandsaw got it. I think that was like that. I think as you push the button in and out, it clicks. I don't know what would have made contact with that one. Another set of contacts come down and rub it. I don't know, but I do know it didn't work. It's not exactly as conclusive as I would have thought it would have been. See if those tabs are kind of... Got that knob just spin. It's probably pressed on. We're not going to get that out of there. I cut around the, the lower half just get an idea we can see what's inside how it works it's gonna launch springs I would just say probably had a dirty set of contacts that's looking a little cruddy I think this is the side that was doing the work you can see how the um, Ends of the contacts are kind of like that one right there. It's really got some some darkness on it. That's it. And that. I would figure it would do something like that. I'm not sure what that middle piece was above it you think because it, that one had to make a path yeah I think it was right above it like that and this came down like so and it filled into that cavity 
I don't know how far away it was. You think it was probably like that? That's my guess. When you click it in, it does. Well, this had to have power on it all the time, so it must have been like that. So that's in the off position. I got it wrong, that's why. So it was like that. So power all the time, power going out to the electric PTO, the middle one, and then the right one was the one that um, was for the safety. So when you pulled the button out, that little tab went into that open window right there, it didn't touch anything. And then when you had it off, it made current go from this side to this side, but it was just so dirty on that that it wasn't repeating itself. And the other side is probably just for a different setup, but it's it's not used in this. All right, that's that. All right, guys, I guess that's going to conclude this one. <laughs> I was planning on having it be in about a 15, 20 minute video. <laughs> We're going to go knock it out and find out something, some safety somewhere that was just not doing its thing. Not like six things that were a problem. You know, a little exaggeration. We'll call it five that were screwed up. So uh, we would go figure it out and get it squared away without a wiring diagram or a uh, uh, spare <laughs> to cheat off of and we're able to get her figured out. Well guys, this one kicked my ass a little bit, but that's okay. It's sometimes good to have a challenge and, you know, smoke a couple of brain cells there, get them working again and uh, do your best troubleshooting with, uh, I try to go without any manuals or wiring diagrams. If I, worst case I have to get to that point, I will, but I like to try to figure out how stuff works, what is connected in what circuit and what each one does. And it just builds on the next time you go to work on something like this, you uh, further your education because you've kind of figured out what does what, what you need to, what needs to see what, you know, as far as power and switches and all. So all that has uh, been added to my brain cells <laughs> for the next one. I don't have any of the missing tins. Uh, I think the owner has them, uh, either that or the shop that took it apart. He may have to go see them, but there's pans that are missing here. There's stuff that holds the battery in. It's missing. There's a tin in the center here that's not here. So, uh, I buttoned up what I could, put tie wrapped a bunch of the wires together, got all the wires back in the looms, cleaned everything back up. Best I could. Put the relay box back in, screwed the fuse box in, it was missing screws. Like I said, it's missing tins and there's nothing holding the battery in and that kind of stuff. So we'll let uh, the owner chase that. But for me, for us, I think we're done. I'm glad that uh, I was able to get it. I'm not much on giving up. But uh, this one did definitely give, give up a little bit of a fight. <laughs> all right, guys, with that, I thank you all for hanging out with me, doing a bit of ranching, a little troubleshooting, and we'll do it again soon sometime. Till then, later.